The Cobbler's Visitor by Leo Tolstoy. A lonely place to be born. What a lonely place to be born. Like a stranger, not far from danger. He was born in a manger, my love. In a certain town there lived a cobbler, Martin by name. He had a tiny room in a basement, one window of which looked out on the street. Through it he could see only the feet of those who passed by, but Martin recognized many people by their boots. Years before his wife and children had died, and Martin's despair had been so great that he reproached God. Then one day an old man from Martin's native village who had become a pilgrim and a holy man stopped in. Martin opened his heart to him. I no longer wish to live, he said. I am without hope. The old man replied, Your despair comes because you wish for your own happiness. Read the Gospels. There you will see how God would have you live. Martin bought himself a Bible. At first he meant to read it only on holy days, but once he began, it made his heart so light that he read it every day. And so it happened that late one night, in the Gospel of Luke, Martin came to a part where a rich Pharisee invited the Lord to his house. A woman who was a sinner came and anointed the Lord's feet and washed them with her tears. The Lord said to the Pharisee, Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house, and you gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. My head you did not anoint with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with precious perfume. Martin pondered, he must have been like me, that Pharisee. If the Lord came to me, should I behave like that? Then he laid his head upon his arms and fell asleep. Suddenly he heard a voice and started from his sleep. No one was there, but he heard someone quote distinctly, Martin, look out into the street tomorrow, for I shall come. Next morning Martin rose before daylight, lit the fire, and prepared his soup. Then he sat by the window to work. As he thought about the night before, he looked out into the street more than he worked. Whenever anyone passed in unfamiliar boots, he would look up to see the face. Presently, an old man who worked clearing snow stood before Martin's window. Martin glanced at him and then went back to his work. After he had made a dozen stitches, he looked out again. The old man had leaned his shovel against the wall and was either resting or trying to get warm. Martin went to the door and beckoned. Come in, he said. Come in and warm yourself. You must be cold. May God bless you, the old man answered. He came in shaking off the snow and wiped his feet, and as he did, he tottered and nearly fell. Don't trouble, Martin said. I'll clean it up. It's all in a day's work. Sit down and have some tea. Filling two tumblers, he passed one to his visitor. The old man emptied his glass. It was plain that he would be glad for some more. Martin refilled the tumbler. As they drank, Martin kept looking out into the street. Are you expecting anyone, asked the visitor. Last night, Martin replied, I was reading about how Christ went to a Pharisee who did not receive him with proper honor. Suppose such a thing could happen to me. What would I not do to receive him? Then as I dozed, I heard someone whisper, Look into the street tomorrow. 
As the old man listened, tears ran down his cheeks. Thank you, Martin. You have given me comfort for soul and body. The old man went away, and Martin sat down to stitch a boot. As he looked out the window, a woman in peasant shoes passed and stopped by the wall. Martin saw that she was poorly dressed and had a baby in her arms. With her back to the wind, she was trying to wrap the baby to her, though she wore only shabby summer clothes. Martin went out and invited them in. Martin brought out some bread and soup. Eat, my dear, warm yourself, he said. As the woman ate, she told him who she was. I'm a soldier's wife. They sent my husband far away eight months ago, and I have heard nothing since. I have been unable to find work and have had to sell all I had for food. I pawned my last shawl yesterday. Martin went to get his cloak. Here he said, it's old, but it will do to wrap the baby in. The woman taking it burst into tears. The Lord bless you. Martin smiled and told her of his dream and the promised visit. Who knows? All things are possible, said the woman. She got up and wrapped the cloak around herself and the baby. Take this, said Martin, and gave her money to get her shawl out of pawn. And then he saw her out. Martin sat down to work again. Every time a shadow fell on the window, he looked up to see who was passing by. After a while, he saw a woman selling apples from a basket. On her back was a heavy sack she wanted to shift. As she placed her basket on a post, a boy in a tattered cap ran up, snatched an apple, and tried to slip away. But the old woman seized the boy by his hair. The boy screamed and the woman scolded. Martin ran out into the street. The woman was threatening to take the boy to the police. Let him go, Granny, Martin said. Forgive him, for Christ's sake. The old woman let go. Ask Granny's forgiveness, Martin told the boy. Oh, Granny, Granny, said Martin. That's our way, but it's not God's way. If he should be whipped for stealing an apple, what should be done to us for our sins? The old woman was silent. God bids us forgive, said Martin, or else we shall not be forgiven. Forgive everyone, and a thoughtless youngster most of all. The old woman wagged her head and sighed. It's true enough, she said, but they are getting terribly spoiled. Then we old ones must show them better ways, Martin replied. As she was about to hoist her sack on her back, the lad sprang forward. Let me carry it for you, Granny. I'm going your way. She put the sack on the boy's back, and they went down the street together. Martin went back to work. Soon he could not see to pass the needle through the holes in the leather. He gathered his tools and placed a lamp on the table, then took his Bible from the shelf. He meant to open the book at a place he had marked, but it opened at another place. Then hearing footsteps, he turned around. A voice whispered in his ear, Martin, don't you know me? Who is it, muttered Martin. It is I, said the voice, and out of a dark corner of the room came the old man who smiled, vanishing like a cloud, and was seen no more. It is I, said the voice again, and out stepped the woman with her baby in her arms. She smiled, and the baby laughed and they too vanished. It is I, said the voice. The old woman and the boy with the apple stepped out, smiled, and then disappeared. Martin's soul grew glad. He began reading the gospel where it had opened. At the top of the page, he read, For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. And at the bottom of the page he read, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, 
you have done it unto me. And so Martin understood the Savior really had come to him that day, and he had welcomed him.